Hi, Vivian. I'm going to take a look at your portfolio for college admission. I know from your statement that you are not planning on applying to art school, however, that you will be including your portfolio as part of your college application. Now, I actually did go back and I just took a quick glance at your portfolio that you submitted to me a few months ago because I wanted to get a frame of reference for where you were and where you are now. And I have to tell you, you have improved so much in so many different areas. And I think you should be really excited about the major strides that you've made in your work. I think it's really clear to me that you listened very carefully to that critique, that you really pushed yourself to really play with color, to think a lot more about the images that you were making, to work on composition, and also to make pieces that really feel finished, that really feel resolved. And so good for you for really having the self-initiative to do that, because I'm not so sure that every student is able to really take in feedback like that and take such concrete action and get such strong results. So really nice job in that area. I mean, it's fantastic to see just how far you've come from that first portfolio. I mean, the thing that really jumps out to me, I think would be your use of color is so much more bold and daring than it was before. I mean, if I look at this old portfolio, the colors are for the most part, very literal and you don't seem to take any risks as far as making something a color that it really shouldn't be. And I just love in particular images seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Those have just the strangest color schemes, but they're really emotional and they're really raw in that way. And I really respond to them in a very visceral manner. So I think great job in terms of really trying to activate your color and having it be a stronger part of your language. I would also say I really noticed that your imagery is so much more engaging by like a thousand times over. Because when I look at your portfolio from here, Everything is very literal. I mean, you have a couple pieces, like I think we talked about how number five had some interesting engagement with the subject matter, but a lot of the other pieces, it's just a figure or just a still life. And there wasn't a lot going on in terms of the subject matter. I see in a lot of these pieces, a really concrete, just palpable stirring narrative. I mean, you can see the emotion just burning off the page, for example, number 10. And then you have more quiet pieces, like for example, number 18, which is a completely different set of emotions. And so really, really nice work, I think, in terms of getting your imagery to be a lot more than just eye candy, because I think what we talked about in your last critique probably was that you clearly are somebody who has outstanding painting skills. I mean, you're really able to paint all these little details, you don't have trouble in that area. But what I saw in your last portfolio is that you weren't really saying anything with your artwork. And I think that has totally changed. I mean, to me, you're on a whole other level of sophistication now, and that's very, very exciting. So great work with all of that. You had asked me about which are your strongest pieces. I think for me, it's probably your more representational figurative pieces, the ones that are more surrealistic. So for me, the strongest pieces would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. I think I'm a little bit on the fence about. I think 12 is an image that you probably could go back and work on a little bit more because I like the premise of the image of number 12, but I think the execution is a little bit lacking in a few areas and I'll talk about that in a little bit. This group of paintings that you have in the middle, I mean, these are really compelling images. A lot of them are strange and surrealistic, and I like them a lot because you're using your technique, but your technique is not carrying the entire piece. Like the technique is working hand in hand with the imagery, and that's terrific. I would say your abstract paintings, like images one, two, three, four, five. I think those are your weaker pieces. I think I like that you're trying them, but I see you struggling in those pieces right now. I think especially in terms of color tendency in those first few abstract pieces. Well, I enjoy that you're getting much looser and using the palette knife and scraping and doing different kinds of strokes. I do feel like you're, you're fighting those paintings a little bit right now. So it's not to say that you shouldn't do them. I mean, I definitely think that if there's something you want to do, you should keep doing it. It's just right now, images 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, and maybe 12, those are so good that number one through five, they just don't look good at all by comparison. So that's the problem. Once you have a couple pieces that are really outstanding, the issue is if you don't have all these other pieces that are sort of functioning at that same 
caliber, it can actually make the other images look not as good. So that's one thing I would keep in mind. I mean, I would say moving forward, I'd be so interested to see if you could get some of the brushwork, like the scraping and the scratchiness and the more direct, looser brushwork or palette knife work in images one through five, if you could let some of that leak into your figurative pieces, I'd be very interested in that because right now it seems like there's two sides of you. There's the side of you that paints these more abstract, more uh, palette knife paintings, which is images one through five. And there's another side of you who is incredibly accomplished in terms of painting technique and in terms of rendering. And you've got these wonderful narratives going on. So it's almost like I'm seeing those two different people. And right now, the, the people that really are more interesting are images seven through 11. So that's what I take under consideration. Um, I'd like to see you just see if there's a way that those two ways of painting don't have to be so separate. It's not bad that they're separate, but I just am thinking, you know, if you have the capability to be as painterly and to layer the paint on as thick as you do, say in image number one, and yet you are able to be so specific and precise as you are in image number nine, I just have to wonder what would happen if those two paintings got together and had a love child and what would be the result of that. So that's certainly a way you can continue to innovate. I really think you need to work on drawing because Right now, your portfolio is so focused on painting. I mean, you don't really have that many drawings. You really only have like three charcoal drawings. Everything else is a painting, or I suppose you have the ink wash drawing, which is number 14. But it seems to me like drawing could be a place that you could experiment a little bit more because oddly enough, your paintings to me are so much more accomplished and more fluid and confident than your drawings. Your drawings, I see you fighting the material. I see you stiffening up quite a bit. Like I would say the two figure studies, number 15 and number 16, those are well drawn, but they feel very stiff compared to the rest of your portfolio, which some of it's incredibly fluid and really energetic and compelling. Same thing with image number 17, the charcoal drawing of the shoe, which is drawn from this structural standpoint, that again feels very much like a class assignment. Like for example, what if you took charcoal and you did a variation on image number seven, that you did that type of surrealistic imagery, but used charcoal instead, and tried to see what kind of results you could get that might be different than what you're getting in oil paint. Because that's one thing I like about working across media is that I think every time you switch media, the media brings out another part of you. And I think that that's fascinating. So even if you're doing the exact same image and the exact same series, doing it in oil paint is very different than say doing it in linoleum printmaking. So that's definitely something I'd like to see you explore because I almost feel like right now your paintings are so accomplished that your drawings in some ways are being left in the dust. Like they just don't even compare anymore. So you see, this is the issue when you start really kicking ass big time on some of your pieces, then it makes the rest of the portfolio look not so accomplished. So I would say if you can keep images seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, so that's five images, I would rework image number 12. And then you said some of the um, portfolio, they only take 10 images. I mean, that's already six. So if you could get maybe four more charcoal drawings that are maybe along the same lines of these images in the middle, I think that could be very interesting. I sort of feel like right now the landscapes are good as an experiment, as a way for you to play around a little bit. I don't know that they're portfolio pieces though, because I just feel like they just don't even hold up to the same caliber of accomplishment that you're hitting in the other pieces. So I might be hesitant about adding those in. I mean, if you were to add in one of these pieces, I think it probably would be image number one or image number two. I think those two probably have more potential than the others. And certainly you could go back and rework them, but I would reconsider that. And I would say the pieces I would eliminate from your portfolio, I would get rid of number four, five, six, 14, 17, 18, 15 and 16 as well, because they just look sort of boring compared to everything else. 13, I think you probably could spend more time on. I just feel like there isn't a lot going on in that image right now. And unless you give me a really good reason to stick around, I'm not going to. Okay, so let's go through and look at each of these individual pieces. Again, I think this was a very important exercise for you because it's really showing me that you have a lot more versatility. The only thing I would say is that I, I don't know what kind of palette knife you were using. I'm guessing you're doing palette knife with this, but 
The thing about a palette knife is it's nice when you can get really, really broad strokes and you can get strokes that aren't like lines. And I feel like that's what's happening is you're trying to use the palette knife like a brush, which doesn't make sense because a palette knife is not a brush. A palette knife is this gigantic, you know, sheet of metal and you can maneuver it in so many different ways. And so here in the mountain, these yellow highlights where you're just going up and down, it's like you're doing the same stroke over and over again, that gets boring really fast. And so I think if you want to really play with the palette knife, you have to be willing to make more different strokes. You have to make bigger strokes. Like a lot of the strokes that you have in this painting right now, they're all so tiny and sort of picky. I'm, I'm really craving like one just giant swooping stroke in a couple of areas that almost like carves into the surface of the canvas. And I think that would work better. Right now, I think the biggest issue with this particular painting is that the contour of the mountains in the background is really crisp and really tight and really articulate. Now, if those mountains really are as far away as I think they should be, the mountains really should feel a little bit more ghost-like. They shouldn't be so strongly defined. And I actually find myself really drawn to the water area in the front because that's where I see you playing more. I feel like once you got to the contour of that mountain, you started getting really nervous about, oh, is anybody going to recognize this? Is anybody going to know this is a mountain? And so just let it go a little bit more. I think what I'd recommend is you look at Turner's paintings because he really was OK with his paintings becoming abstract in a couple of areas. And I think that really helped him quite a bit. Looking at this piece again, I think that this piece is OK. It could use a couple tweaks. One thing I do really like about this piece, which wasn't as prominent in the last painting, is I think the light and dark contrast is really good. I think that the sense of the, the dark shadows towards the bottom of the buildings and then this like beautiful luminous light that's coming out of the sky and then this like sort of dribble of yellow strokes sort of hinting at some highlights or streetlights or something, I think that's very nicely done. And I do think this piece doesn't feel as fussy to me as the last painting. The last painting, I really could see you trying to over explain everything with your palette knife. This one, not so much. This one, I feel like some of the strokes you're putting down have a freshness to them. Like you just put them down and you let them be there. I feel like in the last one, you put it down and then you scraped it all, you know, to death in a way. So I like the spontaneity of this piece, which I don't think is apparent. And the last piece that we just looked at, like I like these little blotches of oranges and reds on the left hand side and also I think color wise you go from purple to blue to yellow to red and so there is a lot more color wise in this piece than the last one. I would say this last piece it's very muddy. I feel like a lot of the colors are very similar and you're really only dealing with cool colors. You have a little bit of yellow in the bottom but that's it and so I think this is a painting that's it's just craving warm colors not all over the place, but just as a secondary role in the painting. This looks like a piece where you were playing around with abstraction and trying to think about different images. And I like that you're doing that. I think that's a really good experiment, but it seems to me like you're not having a lot of fun here, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it, because I look at your figurative paintings and there's so much just passion and excitement in those. And I just feel like as a viewer, I'm just swept away by those figurative paintings. And this, I, I see you fighting, I see you frustrated, I see you not having a good time. And so this is good to do. I'm really glad you did this because this says to me that you are so willing to just try something so totally different than what your strength is in. And so that's good. And I do like some of the color stuff you got down here. Like for example, these stripes of purple, the red, the orange and the yellow. And you will find that a lot of your art career, if you end up being an artist full time, is like that, that you end up doing a lot of things just to do them, not, not because you actually do want to be an abstract painter, but because just being an abstract painter temporarily makes you a different artist altogether. I really truly believe that every experience you have as an artist, it all goes to the same pot, you know, like you may not decide that you're going to paint this way always, but it definitely helps you. And I like the fact that you're scraping, you're more aggressive here. So I, I think this was a really good exercise for you to do. This piece, I guess what I'm interested in in this one is not so much the application of the paint as much as it is the subtlety of the color, because some of these like pastel purples and blues and the way that you're stacking them on top of each other I think is pretty interesting. 
And I do think that this piece is a very different emotion than the last one. Like this one to me is very angry and very aggressive and very rigorous. This piece feels very gentle and very delicate. And it almost feels like a structure that could fall apart at any minute. You almost feel the fragility of the piece really dramatically here. So I like that. My only issue is that I feel like the whole upper left hand side, I suppose, it just gets really flat after a while because I think it's that the whites that you have in the background, the whites at the bottom look exactly the same as the whites at the top. And so I think definitely you need to either have a color change or maybe you need to make either the top or the bottom lighter or darker because in the foreground we have these very dramatic diagonal strokes that you're doing with the palette knife and those are really good as far as grounding the piece and giving us something we can really sink our teeth into so I think that's very good. And I do like this as a composition because I think that when I look at, for example, the mountainscape that we were looking at, this is not a very engaging composition. I mean, it's sort of your stereotypical run-of-the-mill mountainscape, okay? This piece is very different because you have these, I don't know what these are. I mean, they make me think of something very fragile, something very old, and I love the way that they crisscross throughout the entire piece. And then you have these horizontal strokes that are in the background, and then these are great. I think the way you're scraping down here at the bottom, some of the really dark darks you're getting, and then that over some of the lavenders and the blues, I think is really quite nice. I just think that space-wise, the whiteness of the background, it just doesn't change enough for me. And I, I wish that the change from the top to the bottom was something a lot more dramatic, that it had something more to look forward to. I do think that one thing you could do is get a few more warm colors, because I do like the way that the yellow just starts to come forward in a couple areas. This little patch of yellow throughout this whole area in the foreground is so important because I try to imagine, okay, what if this painting didn't have the yellow? What would this look like? And I think it'd look really cold and really dull. And so that yellow is so important here in terms of really activating your color. So I think if anything, this piece was a really good exercise in terms of you really seeing the slight subtleties of color because, you know, you didn't have to put the yellow in here. You could have just easily said, okay, I'm just going to do light blues and light lavenders. It probably would have been okay. But to me, that yellow, the appearance of it says something that you're starting to recognize on a much more sophisticated level, what colors can do for each other. Because it's not really about the yellow. This piece is so much more about the blues and the purples. The yellow is definitely a supporting player, but it's an important one. So I really am happy that you saw that. This piece I think is interesting because it seems like you're using some of the techniques that you were doing with the palette knife. And also it's so different, obviously, figurative wise, because it's almost like a cubist painting, or it makes me think of Marcel Duchamp's New Descending a Staircase. And so there's a very almost robotic look to this figure. He's very um, large and very bulky and almost like stiff and made out of stone. And so I like the um, idea behind that. I'm just not thrilled with the composition because the figure is in a really dynamic pose. Like he, he's almost like, I don't know, like wrapping into himself in a way, but I wish that you zoomed in so that maybe you could crop the top of the head, maybe crop the side of the arm, and just get this figure to, I guess, just expand outwards more. I just feel like compositionally, the figure is really like contained in the middle. My favorite part of this piece is actually your background because I think you're getting some beautiful blacks. Like I can see, even though I know that this background is pretty much black, there's you're putting in so much variation. I mean, just look at this lower left-hand corner. I mean, I can see how this is a little bit brown. This is a little bit purple. It's a little bit blue. And you change it up. Like, this is a very thick dab of paint. This looks very drippy and very light. And this looks very dark and very dramatic. So I think that this is actually one of your more sophisticated backgrounds because you're taking a background which seems like it should be simple and you're actually making it very complex and really rich and wonderful to look at. So I like that part of it. But again, I see you fighting the color a lot, especially in the figure. I feel like a lot of the highlights you're putting in there, there's a pastiness to it. The colors seem to be very dull, very muted. And the thing is, you don't have anything to really offset that. So I sort of feel like this is a piece I probably wouldn't include in the portfolio. But again, 
so valuable in terms of discovering what you're good at, what your language is, what your you know capabilities are. And you just, honestly, you just don't know until you try it. And so I'm so pleased to see that you're doing that. This piece is interesting because it's, it's so out of place compared to all of your other pieces, both technically and in terms of the image. I don't think this is one of your best pieces though, because I sort of feel like when I saw the title New Birth, I just started seeing a lot of cliches about mother and child and wombs and babies. And I just feel like the image itself doesn't have a lot of substance. It feels very generic to me. And I suppose one of the reasons it feels that way is because the faces aren't prominent at all. And these are extremely stylized figures, but also I don't really know where they're supposed to be. It's a little bit confusing. I was thinking, Maybe they're in an interior. I mean, my favorite part of this piece, again, is actually this. This area, this space that's like tucked in way, way back into the background that starts to suggest a little bit of architecture. I find myself just so drawn to that space. Like, I just want to go back to that space and just see what's out there. And I actually find the figures not very interesting at all, again, because I think they are sort of fulfilling those stereotypes of birth and um, motherhood and having children and stuff like that. So I think this piece I'd remove. I just don't think it's remotely as strong as your other pieces. This piece is stunning. I think this is gorgeous. I think that it's clear that you're really using your skill set. And I'm sure you probably use photographic reference for this, but I don't care, okay? I'm always trying to get students to not draw from photographs, but I think in this case, it's really warranted. I think the way that you took all of your references, you merged them all together. I think it's really obvious to me that this is not copied from a photo and that you really did spend time thinking about all the different components and how you're gonna place things. And I just think you did a great job of transitioning between the different elements. Like I love some of these parts here, like some of these really subtle things like this shadow of a shark the sea of um, fish over here. So even though these fish in the foreground who are really leaping forward and, and very dramatic, those are gorgeous, but those fish would not be anywhere if they did not have these connecting bridges between them. The facial expression I think is lovely. I think it really has personality, has character. You feel like you know what she's thinking and she seems very much like an individual. Like when I think about your portfolio pieces from last time, they just seem like generic people. Like I felt like I didn't care what happened to them. I feel a connection with her already. I don't know what her story is, but I'm still thinking about it and I'm trying to put two and two together. And so I think this piece, definitely one of your strongest pieces of the portfolio. I mean, it hits all the corners. Great composition, really dynamic, super lively, beautiful light and dark contrast, just wonderful inventive use of the imagery and just so much of your personality is in this piece. So I think that's wonderful. This piece too, which is obviously, I think at some point you probably had to use photographic references, but to me, there's enough manipulation in this painting that I'm starting to get really excited about it. And it's interesting because this piece, it is very lively and full of energy. And I feel like there's a hopefulness in this piece. This piece is really stark. I mean, it, it seems like, very serious, almost upsetting. And I think what I like about that last piece in this piece is you're really showing me the incredible emotional range that you're showing in your paintings. And actually my favorite part of this piece is this transition here where you have some of the strokes of the hair going over the second figure. In fact, I wanna see more of that. I sort of feel like the hair, you could do like triple the amount because the hair on the right hand side is just incredible. And then I love some of the layering of the eyes and just beautiful colors. You have the warmth of the oranges in the face and then you have the cools of the blues. This is a great piece. I think it's really close. Like honestly, I think you could work on this piece like, I don't know, another hour or something. Just getting more of the hair overlapping over the space I think could be really engaging, but these are really striking pieces. I mean, I don't think anybody looking at these is gonna doubt that you have something to say now. You're, you're not just copying something. You're not just doing a class exercise. You really have your own voice here. And that's huge, that's dramatic. This piece too, really, really emotional. And I think just incredible brushwork in the face. I remember from your earlier pieces that your brushwork was so tight and it's still pretty controlled, 
But I do think that you are saying more with less that, for example, instead of putting down 20 brushstrokes, I feel like you're putting down 15. And so that efficiency is very important. And also this one, just the intensity of the color is amazing. And I just love the dramatic use of the pinks and the magentas and the purples. And I mean, just gorgeous, gorgeous work. Really, really nice piece. And this piece too, I think, first of all, so ambitious, three feet by four feet. That's a huge oil painting. And I mean, I looked at this painting, I knew exactly what it was about, maybe almost to the detriment. I almost wonder if maybe the school flags are maybe overdoing it. Push them back into the space so they're not so prominent. So that way maybe it takes us a little bit longer. Or another way you could do it is to just fill the background with those school flags, just totally pack it. Because the figure on the right hand side obviously has this very explosive, dramatic look. And then the other figure on the left hand side, she looks like she's trying to keep it together with everything that's going on. But I just feel like the background is maybe too empty and too plain. Like I feel like in this piece, it didn't bother me so much because you have so much going on. And then this piece too, you have this really strong light and such a different color shift on this side. So I feel like it's okay here, but here it's almost like your background is too fragmented. It's like, it's blue, then it's magenta, then it's yellow, then it's orange. And so I almost feel like you need to find a way to get the background to stitch things together because I feel like it's too many pieces. So maybe increasing the flags or making them more subtle. Right now it's sort of awkward because it's like we notice them, but not enough but maybe too much. I'm not really sure about that. And I do wish that these two figures interacted more because I do feel like the figure on the right has just been pasted on top of the one on the left. Especially this is a little weird. This edge of the elbow looks like it's right up against the contour of this figure's hair. So that's sort of a strange area. And I think I'd rather see this elbow like in her face rather than having it be so close. And so I guess that's my issue with this piece compositionally is it does feel almost like a photo collage. This is stunning. I think this is really, really scary looking, but in a very good way, I suppose. I think especially the background is really beautifully done. I mean, it, it's so appropriate, I think, for what you're showing. You're depicting this very harsh, you know, difficult image to look at. My issue with this image is I think you got to really loosen up on the plastic bag because the plastic bag to me, I don't know, it's like it almost looks like it's sculpted out of something, like it was chiseled. And I think the thing that's challenging about a bag like this is that it is translucent because I can see some of the face coming through, but I feel like you tightened up way too much and you were trying too hard to show every single wrinkle. I mean, quite frankly, I would love to see you just take a pellet knife to the trash bag here and just go crazy and do all these just violent strokes. I mean, this is not a pretty image. I think you know that. And I think that if you had the starkness of some really energetic strokes, put that against the, the really beautiful rendering of the chest and the clothing and the hair, that might be a really nice contrast. I guess I just feel like your plastic bag is too nice. It's like too controlled. And I feel like th this is an area where I really wanna feel the asphyxiation of the figure. And I don't feel that right now, it feels too calm. So I wonder if you could show that almost panic in your brushwork. And this is where, again, you know, whip out that palette knife and do some of that stuff. Put in those marks you were putting in those landscape paintings, but put them in here. Sometimes I do this, if I'm working on a painting and I know I wanna do something to it, but I don't wanna like risk ruining the whole thing because I've worked on it long enough. If you coat your entire painting before you start painting with oil medium, okay? So take this piece right now when it's fully dry, cover it with oil medium, and then you paint over it. If you don't like what you can do, you can scrape it off and wipe it off with a rag. So I would try that because to me, that's like win-win situation because it could get better or it couldn't stay the same. So nothing's getting worse. You might try that. This piece I'm very excited about. I just think that it hasn't gone far enough. Probably what it is, is the eyes, the really big ones that are imposed on top. They feel like they're sort of drawn onto me right now and they don't have enough of a presence because the portrait in the background, I think is obviously very beautifully painted and, and really you spent a lot of time on that. But I feel like these were just sort of stuck in there last minute and I could totally buy this 
if you just spent more time on that area. I do like the drips back here. I think these are wonderful. Definitely keep those in. This face up at the top is confusing to me though. I mean, it could be that you haven't spent enough time on it, but this almost looks like a different person and not even a real person. It looks more like an icon or I don't know, a character. Like these two faces look like an actual person. This one, not so much. And so I think for this third face, if you want to keep it there, I think it better look like it's the same person because otherwise it becomes a totally different story. I'm guessing this is a self-portrait. You don't need that third face. I think that third face just confuses things and I think you could easily get rid of it. This particular piece, I, I guess now that I'm looking at it again, I'm guessing it's a family member that seems like um, what the image is. I feel like it's really unresolved. I think it could go somewhere. But right now, it seems like it's only about halfway done. And I wish that there were a few more signals of who this person is and what they're doing, because the only thing that I see them doing is I see them holding a phone, but it's a little bit weird because they're looking at us and not at the phone. And so I'm just wondering what you're trying to do here. Like, is she, are we interrupting her? Is she acknowledging us? I, I'm confused about what our relationship is as the viewer with her, and I wish that there were a few more specific objects that told me who she was, because the clothing she's wearing, it's really generic. It's really hard for me to tell who she is. And then the table on the left, also generic, same thing with the background. The chair is the one thing in this drawing, this painting rather, that I think is a little bit specific because it's an older chair. It doesn't seem like a very contemporary version. I guess I just, feel like right now this particular image is too generic. I want to know more about what the story is, what you're trying to say. I don't know if you have that developed yet, but um, I definitely would because this piece could go somewhere. I just feel like it's not quite there yet. You need to spend more time with it. This piece I would get rid of. I think it's definitely one of your weakest pieces, not because of your technique, but because it's so obviously painted from a photo and from like a photo off of a beauty magazine is what I'm thinking. Like it looks like one of those like Hollywood portraits where people are trying to look dramatic. And I don't know, I just, I have trouble getting over that. I mean, I really like some of the bleeds and the technique I think is wonderful, but I can't escape this face. And it's just driving me a little crazy right now because it just looks so lifted from a magazine. So I would get rid of this. You've got these um, two figure drawings and again, the, these to me, they're well done. This one has some proportional issues, like she has really tiny feet and tiny legs. But I guess what, what frustrates me about these two is the backgrounds just seem so arbitrary. Like here, you're just tossing in this. This one, you're just tossing in these random strokes. And I find the black strokes in the background really distracting. I wish that they weren't there. What I would say, next time you're in a figure drawing class, you are finding you want to do something in the background, draw what's in the background. I know that sounds boring and a lot of people are like, oh, I don't want to do that. But you know what? It's better than what you have right now because what you have right now screams to me, oh, I don't want to draw the background. So I'm just going to throw in these black lines, <laughs> which is not better. Trust me. So I would say whatever's back there, wh whether it's a bookcase, whether it's other students in the background, I do that a lot in my classrooms where I'll have students draw the whole space and you're amazed how much there is to draw. So definitely um, think about that. Now this shoe drawing, I think I'd get rid of this. This looks so much like a class assignment and I just feel like I don't get a sense of who you are from this piece. It just seems like somebody told you very specifically how to draw this. So I would get rid of this piece. And then this last piece I think has beautiful emotion to it. And actually my favorite part of this painting is this which is this area where the figure is compressing into the bed. This is beautiful work with the palette knife, just gorgeous. But the figure I think is a little weird in that she does look like she's floating. Like I don't really see her body nestled into the bed. I wanna see that more, but I do think it's problematic that she looks really outlined. Like, could you make this painting without outlining her at all? I think that would be the challenge and also to get a better composition. I don't think it's great that she's right in the middle. It does help that the bed is at a diagonal, but again, you've got another empty background. So this is one of those paintings. I think it's a good idea, but I think you have to flush out more of the ideas. I don't know if you're doing thumbnail sketches or anything. If you aren't, you really should, because that would help you work through some of the kinks in some of these images.
So overall, Vivian, terrific job. I mean, wow, so much improvement from the last time that I saw these pieces. I think that's wonderful. You still have things to work on, though. So I think I would definitely say um, get more into your drawing because your painting is really outstanding. But if you keep polishing that for too long, you're going to miss out on other opportunities. You'll also find that drawing is faster, and so you can get more done within a shorter period of time. And, and just keep pushing yourself in terms of all that experimentation. I mean, it's all going to the same place. So win-win situation.